Welcome back to our series on mathematical statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is video 22. We are in lecture 9, and this is part 5 of simple regression. So in this video, we're going to talk about the estimators for the mean of y at a specific value of x, or mu of y given x. And we're going to, uh, we see that uh, mu sub y given x is equal to alpha plus beta times x minus x bar. This is our um, model for uh, y. So this is um, y is equal to this plus epsilon, our error. Okay. So in our least squares regression estimator of this is y hat equals alpha hat plus beta hat times x minus x bar. So we take these S, um, parameters and we estimate them. And by estimate them, we get y hat. And y hat is an estimate of mu at uh, of the mean of y given x. Okay. So as x varies, uh, y hat is an estimate of the population regression line. So as we change x, we get a different value of y hat, and that we could plot that and give us give ourselves that regression line. Okay, so from six, section 6.4, we found that the MLE of a normal distribution with variance sigma squared is sigma hat equals <clears throat> 1 over n times the sum of xi minus x bar quantity squared, and we could write that as 1 over n s x x, where s x x is this quantity, this sum of squares difference. <clears throat> Since y i has a normal distribution with mean alpha hat plus beta hat times x minus x bar and a variance of sigma squared, the MLE of sigma hat is given as 1 over n sum of y i minus y hat, this is the mean, um, squared. Okay. This estimator is slightly biased because um, if you remember that s squared is equal to 1 over n minus 1 sum of, we'll use the y's, yi minus yi hat squared, the mean, um, then uh, we can solve for this quantity, and it is going to be n minus 1 times s squared, and so we have that uh, the expected value of sigma hat squared is going to equal n minus 1 over n um, times sigma squared, which is not equal to sigma squared. So as n approaches infinity, then this quantity approaches uh, sigma squared, because n minus 1 over n, as n gets bigger, approaches 1. Right now, it's, it's, it's too big. n minus 1 over n for a finite value is going to be bigger than 1. Okay, So it's asymptotically uh, unbiased, but it is an unbiased estimator. Most textbooks use um, this quantity for SSE, uh, but we're going to use sigma hat squared equals... Uh, 1 over n times SSE, so that we agree with the textbook. Now let's talk about an alternate form, uh, a formula for SSE. So we start with yi hat, which is uh, the equation here, and then we substitute in for alpha hat, which is y bar. Okay? And so then we could say yi uh, minus yi hat because we need that and then squared, so we're taking this one step at a time. And we could think of it this way, and then we square this quantity, and so we need to square this quantity. And so we take this quantity squared minus 2 times that quantity and the second quantity here, plus this quantity squared here. And then uh, the SSE is um, given here, as sum of yi minus y hat squared. And so that can be written as the sum of yi minus y bar squared 2 minus 2 beta hat sum of yi xi. Well, this quantity here is s of xy. And um, 
Then, if we want to get beta hat, remember that beta hat is equal to SXX or XY over SXX. So now we multiply by 1, SXX over SXX. And this is now beta hat. <clears throat> and so we end up with um, minus 2 beta hat squared SXX. And this is beta hat squared SXX. So now we can subtract these and we end up with SS, SYY minus beta hat squared SXX. And since we're going to use, um, this would be N times SSE, actually. And so then SSE would equal 1 over N times SYY minus beta hat squared SXX. All right. Now we want to do an example. We're going to use that compressive strength data from example one and two, and we're going to find these or perform these four actions. So, the first one we want we we want to find the the least squares regression line, and we've already found in example two that alpha hat equals y bar um, is twenty eight point seven three, and beta hat was 0.27, and x bar was twenty. So we can write this as um, alpha hat plus beta hat x minus x bar is equal to 28.73 plus 0 0.27 times x minus 20. And so that is our regression line. The next thing we want to do is plot the least square regression line and the seven data pairs on the same graph. So I've done this in R, and here is what we have. We could do it by hand, but I don't want to take that long of time. And so this is... Um, y hat equals 28.73 plus 0.27 x minus 20. Okay. And you can simplify this by uh, distributing the 0.27 across here and then taking the 0.27 and tw times 20 and subtracting it from 28.733. Now we want to find C says uh, give give a point estimate of the mean compressive strength at x equals 18. So what we do is we plug in 18 for this value. So we have 28.73. Well, actually, I'm going to put that this is y hat at um, x equals 18, which is 28.73 plus 0.27 times 18. Oops minus 20, which gives us um, 0.27, 18, 28.19. Okay. Now part D says, um, give a point estimate for sigma squared. Okay. So a point estimate for sigma squared. Recall that we had found out that SYY is 53 0.23, SXX was 700, SXY was 189, and beta hat is 0.27. So SSE here <clears throat> is going to be, um, the SSE is going to be SYY. So I'm, I'm sorry, I made a mistake up here. So um, when I was doing this, we're saying that um, SSE is not 1 over, it's simply um, this quantity. I'm sorry. So SSE is this, but then sigma hat squared is equal to SSE over N. All right. So this is SSE, and so that's what we need to use. Okay. So this is SSY minus beta hat squared SXX, which is equal to 53.23 minus 0.27 times 700, um, which is equal to, oh, squared. Can't forget the 0.27 is squared here. Uh, and this gives us 2.20. So sigma hat squared is 1 over n SSE, which is equal to 1 over 7 times 2.2, which is... Um, 0 0.3142857, etc., which is approximately 0 0.31. Okay. All right. So
So now let's talk about the properties of the least squares estimators. So first, we need to recall that um, y1 to yn are independent random variables. The expected value of yi is alpha plus beta times xi minus x bar. Remember that the expected value always uses population parameters. And then the variance of yi is sigma squared. So each, um, we have to remember that they are normally distributed, so each yi has a normal distribution with the mean of the um, regression model, and then sigma squared. So, um, so the mean here goes here, and then the variance is here. So number one and number four imply that any linear combination of y1 to yn has a normal distribution, okay? Because yi are independent random variables and they are normally distributed. And the normal distribution, any linear combination of normal, uh, normally distributed random variables is also normally distributed. So that's a nice property of the normal distribution. So now let's look at... Um, the first thing I want to say, or want to do, is that alpha hat is equal to uh, y bar. And so we're going to find the expected value of alpha hat. And that's the expected value of y bar, which is the expected value of 1 over n times the sum of yi, which is, I can pull the 1 over n outside of the expectation, it's a constant, sum expectation of the sum of yi, which is the sum of the expectations, 1 over n, sum of e of yi, and this is going to equal 1 over n, sum of alpha plus beta times x minus x bar. And this is going to equal, I can distribute the summation and this is if i equals 1 to n, okay, i equals 1 to n. So i equals 1 to n. So this will be the sum of alpha, i equals 1 to n, plus beta times the sum of xi minus x bar. This should be an i. And so, um, beta squared, I believe, no, beta, that's right, beta. Um, and then this quantity, the sum of xi's minus x bar, this quantity is always, get the parenthesis there, this is zero. So this is 1 over n, and the sum of alpha n times is just n times alpha, which is equal to alpha. So there's the expectation of, of uh, alpha hat. So now let's do the variance of alpha hat. hat. That's going to be the variance of y bar, which is the variance of 1 over n times the sum of yi, okay, which is 1 over n squared, we square the constant, times the variance of the sum of yi's. Now, because these are independent, this is equal to 1 over n squared times the sum of the variances of yi's. If they're not independent, this is not true. And the variance of yi is equal to sigma. So this is 1 over n squared, the sum of sigma squared, from i equals 1 to n. So that means it's 1 over n squared times n times sigma squared. And so one of those n's cancel, and I, I'm left with 1 over n sigma squared, or sigma squared over n, which is the um, variance of a mean, which is exactly what we expected. And now, we recall that we have beta hat is sxy divided by sxx, and we want to find the expected value of this. So this is equal to e of the sum of xi 
minus x bar times y i minus y bar over the sum of x i minus x bar quantity squared. Okay. And <clears throat> remember that the x i's and the x bars, they're constants with respect to the expectation. We're taking this expectation with respect to y only. So this is equal to the sum of x i minus x bar quantity squared in the denominator. And then we have the expectation of the sums is the sum of the expectations. So I have e of x i minus x bar y i minus y bar. Now, I can split this up, and this is a, a technique that we use x i minus x bar, quantity squared in the numerator, or denominator, I should say. And then I can distribute x i and x bar uh, across the y i minus y bar. So I end up with the sum of the expectation of x i um, times y i minus y bar minus x bar, some uh, y i minus y bar. And then I can distribute the expectation across the different, across that sum. Okay? And so now I have the sum of, or I, actually I have 1 over, 1 over sum of xi minus x bar squared. And then I have the sum of uh, the expectation of Actually, I'm going to distribute the summations uh, first. So I'm going to uh, take this expectation back out of the, um, let's make this smaller. So I'm going to take the expectation out of the summation. I don't need to take it in there yet. So E of the sum of I equals 1 to N. And then this will be, E of the sum of x i times y i minus y bar minus x bar times y i minus y bar. And then I distribute the summation across um, here and here, across that subtraction. And so this is E of the sum of xi minus, or times xi times yi minus y bar minus the sum of <clears throat> x bar, oops, I keep wanting to, x bar times yi minus y bar, but X bar doesn't have any indexes, so it can come out to the front. So we have X bar times the sum of YI minus Y bar, but this quantity is zero. The sum of the individual values minus their means, that always adds up to zero. Okay. So then this is equal to on the in the denominator x i minus x bar quantity squared and then I have um, just this one sum this whole thing went to zero and so I can say this is zero and so I have the sum of x i minus or times y i minus y bar and so this can be the sum of the expected value of xi times yi minus y bar. And this is equal to, uh, oh, and I can rewrite this as 1 over sxx. I should have done that earlier. And then um, uh, I did this backwards. So, um, Apologize. Let's 
We're going to come back and we're going to distribute this differently. So I can clean this up. Okay. So this is equal to 1 over SXX. And then I'm going to distribute the y's across the xi minus x bar. So this is going to be e of the sum of <clears throat> yi times xi minus x bar minus y bar xi minus x bar. Okay. And then I distribute the summation, and this is 1 over SXX, and I have um, expected value of the sum of Y, so the, yeah, YI times, and I don't need that parenthesis, I keep wanting to put it in there, YI times XI minus X bar minus Y bar uh, times the sum of xi minus x bar. And so this quantity is 0. And I'm left with 1 over sxx, expected value of the sum of yi xi minus x bar. And this is equal to 1 over sxx, the sum of the expected value of yi times xi minus x bar. But remember that xi and x bar, uh, xi's are not random variables here. It's with respect to y that we're taking this expectation. And so this is equal to 1 over sxx sum of xi minus x bar times e of yi. And e of yi is alpha plus beta times xi. So this is 1 over sxx and sum of xi minus x bar times alpha plus beta times xi minus x bar. And we still have the sum i equals 1 to n. And so we can break this up. We can distribute uh, this quantity across the alphas and the betas. And then we can uh, distribute the summation too. So we have 1 over SXX. Um, we have the sum of alpha times XI minus X bar plus the sum of beta times xi minus x bar quantity squared. And this is equal to, so I can pull the alpha outside of here. And so that's going to be 1 over sxx. And I need to make sure there's a bracket here because it's times the whole thing. And this is going to be... Um, times alpha times the sum of xi minus x bar, and that's 0, plus beta times the sum of xi minus x bar quantity squared, <clears throat> which is going to give me um, beta times the sum of, so beta times sxx divided by sxx, which is equal to beta. So beta is an unbiased estimator. Beta hat is an unbiased estimator of beta. So now we want to take the variance of this beta hat. And so the variance of beta hat is equal to the variance of SXY divided by SXX. Well, remember that SXX is a is a constant, so we can bring that out. That's 1 over SXX quantity squared. Variance of SXY, which is 1 over SXX squared, times the variance of the sum of XI minus X bar times YI, whoops, 
minus y bar. And then we're going to distribute the y i and the y bar across. So we're going to distribute actually this across these two. And so this is going to be sxx squared on the denominator variance of the sum of y i or x i minus x bar y i minus <clears throat> the sum of y bar x i minus x bar which is equal to 1 over SXX squared variance of the sum of XI minus X bar YI uh, minus Y bar sum of XI minus X bar. And this is 0. <clears throat> and so this leaves us 1 over SXX squared variance of the sum of xi minus x bar yi. Now the yi's are all independent. And because they're all independent, I can pull the variance inside the summation. If it weren't independent, then I'd need to have all of the covariances as well. Okay? But they are independent, so, um, and I would have a big messy thing with two times a y1, a covariance of y1, uh, y2, and then xi minus x bar quantity squared, and we would have that whole mess. But instead, because they are independent, we can do this. And it's only because they are independent. If they're not independent, you cannot do this. Variance of xi minus x bar yi. Now, the xi's are constant. So they're a constant. We can square them and pull them out of the variance. And so we end up with 1 over SXX squared uh, sum of XI minus X bar quantity squared variance of YI, which is sigma squared. So this is going to be 1 over SXX squared. And then we have... <clears throat> The variance of y is going to be constant. That's a sigma squared, so I'm going to have sigma squared sum of xi minus x bar quantity squared, which is, um, this is sxx. So I'm going to have um, sxx over sxx squared sigma squared equals sigma squared over sxx. So this is the variance of beta hat. So it is not equal to sigma squared, but then there's nothing that says it should be. Okay. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, so please update your, uh, or if you have questions, come to virtual office hours. If you need help before then, then email me. I'm happy to help you. I'll get back to you as soon as it's possible for me. Please take care of yourself because we hope to see you next time.